Hi everyone, can you hear me? Wow, there's 10 of you here already. I can see Rachel. Um, gonna miss tonight covered in paint. Thought I would be finished in time. Hopefully it'll be recorded. Yeah, Rachel, it, it will be recorded as always, unless something goes wrong. So don't worry about it. You'll be able to go back and watch it. Hi, Hazel. Marcia, good morning. Hi, Charlotte. So Charlotte's saying, hi everyone, looking forward to this. Never heard of word books before last week. Okay, well that's good. So you're in for a treat. Um, I can see Susan. I can see Reflections by Jane. So if you could just all let me know if you can hear me. Oh, I've just seen Marcy is now, is now saying, yes, you can hear me. Hi, Jason. Hope you're okay. So I just thought I'd pop on a few minutes before and just make sure everything was OK. Um, wasn't expecting there to be 21 people here already. Um, wow. Hi, Alison. Oh, I forgot. Alison sent me a beautiful card um, and I was going to try and show it, but I've left it in the other room, so I'm going to have to show it probably next week. Um, but thank you so much, Alison. It, it really was lovely of you to send me that card. Um, we've got a Christine from Scotland. Diane is saying hi. Jane is saying yes, loud and clear. Oh, that's good. Celeste, hi. <clears throat> So, somebody last week, I think it might have been Alison, can hear you all the way in Illinois. <laughs> Brilliant, thank you. Um, I think it might have been Alison <clears throat> that asked about doing the word books. So, word books is something that I've done over the years several times. Hi, Denise in Cold Leicester. <laughs> Hi, Ted. Um, but believe it or not, when I came, to look for a photograph for the thumbnail, I couldn't find a single one. I even went back to my old WordPress blog and um, there, there will be something on there, but I just couldn't find anything. And to be honest, I was being too lazy. I didn't want to keep scrolling back through years and years and years worth of blog posts. So I've come to the conclusion that they must have all been in my folder on my Mac that crashed a couple of years ago. So I've got nothing on this new computer. So I ended up Googling myself and word books. And this picture that you see on screen here is the only thing I could find on Google that related to me. And this is obviously, I'm not sure how well you'll see it, but this one says smile. So each page is a letter. So you've got the S, the M, the I, the L and the E. And on this particular one, I've done it in kind of like red, white and blue. But, you know, you, you can do them all the same colour page. You can do the pages in different colours. You can do them in pattern paper. You can do whatever you want. But this was the only one that I could actually physically find that I've made to be able to show you tonight, to give you an idea of what um, I'm going to try and show you how to do. Now, I've just seen, a, oh, I thought, okay, I, I saw freezing and I thought Diane was saying, me that the, saying that the screen was freezing, but no, freezing and raining in Runcorn, Diane's saying. Ashley or anyone here, have you used vinyl you can print on? Uh, Marcia, no, I've not used printable vinyl. But I think basically, if you're talking about how to cut it, then I think you just cut it in the same way that you would any other vinyl. What I am going to try and do over, I don't know when, maybe the next few weeks, is I'm going to try and get some of the sublimation vinyl. I think Cricut call it infusible ink and possibly some 
some kind of blanks that go with it and have a go at maybe cutting that and making something with the scan and cut. But it's just another thing that's on my list of, you know, things and projects to do in the future. I can see Thea is saying hi. Elaine is in Minnesota. Um, Ted, oh, there you go. Ted saying I did use some printable vinyl to make stickers. Um, so basically, yeah, uh, Marcia, you could maybe make make your designs in Canva, print, download them and print them like I showed how to make the teacup card and the dog shape card and then just scan them through your scan and cut machine and get the scan and cut to add an outline and cut them for you. It, it, it is something I will do at some point in the future, but I kind of just have this list that just keeps getting added to all the time. Rosemary is saying, hi, Ashley and everyone, a very pleasant Sunday to you all. Marcy is saying, what kind of printer, laser or inkjet? I'm not sure, but I thought it would be inkjet, but I could be wrong, Marcia. So Ted's saying he used a laser printer. You'll want to make sure the vinyl you get says either inkjet or laser. There you go. Right, so let's let's make a start, shall we? So I'm going to close this down. I am in Canvas Workspace Online. Hi, Ellen. Hi, Carmen. Hope you're all OK. I'm going to open a new blank page. And again, no particular reason for Canvas Workspace online other than it's just the one I tend to go to as my default. But whatever I show you tonight in Canvas online, you should be able to do in Canvas the download. The only difference being you will have more choice of fonts on your computer if you use the download version. But as I said, I just tend to automatically default to Canvas Workspace online. So I'm going to open a new blank page. And let's just make this a bit bigger. OK, so hopefully you should all be able to see my Canvas Workspace page now. And I'm just going to come over to the text and I'm just going to choose one of the fonts. Now, a bit like last week when I was showing how to make the number shape cards and the word card, I have found from past experience making word books that they work better if you keep your font height all one height. So either use all uppercase letters for your words or use all lowercase, providing that they're all the same height. They look better that way rather than, you know, like if you were typing baby rather than typing the first B as a capital and then the A, B, Y in lowercase. They they look better if the font heights are all the, set, all the same across the word. So either use all uppercase or all lowercase rather than mixing the size of your fonts. I've just seen Linda is saying good day from New York. Hi, Linda. Maria is in Caffili. I don't know if I've already said hi to you or not. So I'm going to choose a font. And the first word that we're going to do is baby, because that was what was asked for last week. So I'll just choose this font here, which is the um, it's called Brussels Demi. So I'm just going to left click to select it. And that's going to bring the word text onto my screen. I'm going to left double click at the end of the word to get the flashing cursor. And then I'm just going to use the delete key on the keyboard to get rid of that word. I'm going to put the capital locks on on my keyboard and type the word baby and hit enter or carriage return. And then just left click on the page somewhere to deselect. Hi, Vicky. Hope you're OK. 
So, there's a couple of things to mention. Now, depending on how you want to fasten your word book, will determine whether you want to put, you know, holes in it now or not at all. So, I'm not sure if you'll see this on my, let me see if I can bring this in. Let me just drag this, make this bigger again. So, on this one, can you see here, I've got little um, split pins, these are. So with this particular one, I punched two holes with my crocodile through all the five layers and then I put little split pins in. You can staple them and then you could maybe add a piece of card or something over the top to hide the staples. You can punch holes and fasten them with ribbon or if you want to get the scan and cut to put your holes in while it's cutting everything out, you can put them in while you're doing your designing. So there's lots of different options. Hi, Patricia from Alabama. Julie, it's all right. I'm only just starting and it will be recorded. So hopefully you can go back um, if you've missed anything. So again, as last week, if you're going to put your holes in, in Canvas Workspace, you need to set the size of the design before you apply the holes because if you make your word book and put your holes in which will be you know for fastening for ribbon or split pins or brads or whatever and then you go and resize it those holes will get misshaped so again you know let's just say for argument's sake we want to make a this this word book to fit in a five by seven envelope okay so i'm going to come to the basic shapes and i'm just going to drag a square on and just it this isn't vital by eye i'm going to drag it out to, so it's about seven inches in width and about five inches in height now a five by seven envelope is bigger than five by seven they're usually about five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. So if we make this rectangle five by seven, this is only a guide for the size of the design. Then as long as it fits within this at the end, it should fit in your five by seven envelope. OK. But again, you can assemble this and make it and then resize it as small or as big as you want. But you've got to be mindful that you've got to do that before you apply your holes. So if you're unsure, I would say leave your holes out. And if you've got a crocodile or a hole punch, then don't put the holes in in Canvas Workspace. Just cut your pages, stack them all up together and punch your holes later. So I hope that makes sense. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to drag this word over this box and I'm just going to kind of drag it out so it nearly fits the width and I'm going to drag it down so that it, you know, kind of nearly fits the height. I'm just going to squash it in a bit. You can get rid of the box now because that's kind of given me an idea roughly how big this is okay so i can put that out of the way that was just as a guide so because i typed the word baby all in one action this is all one group and we need to ungroup it let me just see i've just seen something pop up evening everyone a little late being out for something to eat the first time in well over a year as its partner's birthday. Oh, lovely, Janet. I went out for breakfast this morning with Hannah. She took me out for breakfast, which was lovely, to the place where she took me for that Easter egg at Easter. Um, hi, Thea. Right, OK, so we've got the word baby. We've typed it in one action. It's all a group. We need to separate it. So with it selected, again, you know, if you watch and you join many of my Sunday night lives, you'll know I prefer to use the right click on my mouse and I'm going to hit divide. But you can 
um, you know, with it all selected, you can use edit and use the divide down here in process overlap. Whichever way you do it, you just want your letters to be separated. So now I've used the divide function. These letters are all individual letters. So I'm going to drag on another box. I just want to see how high the letters are. So all these letters should be the same height and they're 3.63 high. So this square now, I want to make 3.36 high. So I'm just going to use the mouse and if I can't get it exact, I'll do it using the properties box. So I can come in here and I can just say 3.36 and hit enter. So this is now or should be the same height. Oh, 3.63. What have I done? 3.36. So I need to change that. Sorry. So 3.63. There you go. So this square that I dragged on is the same height as the height of my letters, but I'm going to make it narrower. And I kind of tend to make my first page around about two inches wide. But again, it's entirely up to you. So these are all individual letters. I'm going to bring this box now over so it overlaps my first letter. And I'm just going to select everything and go to edit and just line them all up on the top edge so that I know the box is at the same height as all my letters. I'm going to select the box and I'm going to right click and say duplicate and I want four boxes because I've got four letters. So I've already got one. So I need to say duplicate one, duplicate again and duplicate again. So I'm just right clicking and choosing duplicate. So I've now got four boxes. I'm just going to select the four boxes, not the letters, and I'm going to say edit, align them hopefully on the center and align them all up on the top. So I've got four boxes stacked on top of each other and I've got four individual letters. Now I'm just going to select the boxes and using the directional arrows on my keyboard, I'm just going to scoot them all over a little bit because they've moved while I was stacking them. I basically want the first box to overlap my first letter. Now, again, this is all personal preference. If you want your letters close together or wide apart or so that they look as though they overlap, this is where you need to do it. So me personally, I like my letters to slightly overlap, even though we're not physically going to weld each of the letters together. So I'm going to select the A and because I've got them all, you know, lined up already along the top, I'm not going to use the mouse. I'm just going to use the leftward facing arrow of the four directional arrows on the keyboard. And I'm just going to scoot it over until I kind of get a little bit of an overlap at the bottom here. Then I'm just going to left click on the B and do the same. You don't have to do this. You can keep them all completely separate. You can even space them further apart. It's entirely up to you. I kind of personally think that they look better either if they're ever so slightly overlapped or if they literally just kind of butt up to each other. So again, play with it, get the look that you, you know, think works for you. Now, because of the Y being wider at the top than it is at the bottom, I'm going to overlap it at the top around about the same distance as I've got these overlapped down here. So I'm just going to scoot it over a little bit more. So that's what I've got so far. OK, so now I'm just going to bring in my template again, if you like, and just kind of position this over it to see how. Once this word book is finished, it's going to fit in my five by seven envelope. OK, and as you can see, it kind of fits more or less on the width, but I could make it slightly higher. So I'm going to select everything and in Canvas Workspace to adjust the size as a group. You've got to group the objects together, but in the download version, you don't have to group them to resize them as a group, if that makes sense. So I've selected 
all my four rectangles and my four individual letters. I'm going to right click and group. And now I've got them as a group. I'm just going to position them in this kind of template rectangle, which is just really representing my envelope. And I'm not going to touch the width, but I'm going to drag the height out. OK, and I'm doing all this before I put my punched holes in, because like I said a few minutes ago, if I put, say, my quarter, you know, quarter of an inch holes in the side here, which will be the punched holes for the ribbon. If I then go to resize it later, those holes will get distorted. OK, so I'm just going to get my rectangle out of the way, because as I say, that's just acting as my template for my envelope. So now I need to select all this and right click and ungroup. So everything now is completely separate. Hi, Lynn. It's fine, don't worry. It should be recorded so you can always go back. I, I, can, I think I started around about five past five. OK, so now if you don't want to put the circles in, then don't do this next step. OK, but I'll walk you through it. So I'm going to select a circle and I'm just going to grab a corner and I'm going to squash it down until it's about a quarter of an inch. Again, this is your personal preference. You know, whatever size you want to make it. I'm going to try and get it. There you go. A quarter of an inch. You could make it three eighths. It's entirely up to you, whatever you want to do. And I'm just going to position it up here with it selected. I'm going to right click and make a duplicate and I'm going to drag the duplicate just down a little bit. I'm going to select them both and go edit and align them centrally together. And then I'm just going to right click and make them a group. So these two circles are now a group. And if I was to put them on my word book, they kind of sit roughly like that. If you want them further apart, just make them further apart. If you want them closer together, position them closer together before you centralize them. OK, so I'm just going to move them out of the way and put them on one side. So again, I've basically got four layers. So I need four of these circles. So with this group of circles selected, I'm going to right click and I'm going to duplicate three more times. So there's one, there's two. And there's three. I'm now going to select the four group of circles. I'm going to come to the top. I'm going to choose a line on the horizontal and a line on the vertical. So they're now stacked on top of each other. Hi, Terry. Hope you're OK. So now I'm going to grab them all as a as a, a group, although they're grouped individually, but not grouped as a group of four, if that makes sense. They're just stacked on top of each other. And I'm going to position them where I kind of roughly want them here. Now, I'm not putting them too close to the edge because I find if you're using something like ribbon or, you know, big split pins, if you put them too close to this edge, um, especially if you're using a thicker ribbon, sometimes it can kind of, you know, it gets too close to the edge and it, and it can um, make the edge of your card rip or look a bit ugly. So, you know, you position them wherever you want. I'm just going to kind of position them there. Right. So this is now where the fun starts. If I left click onto the top pair of circles, and hold down my shift key and left click onto my first layer. And then while I've still got those two selected, left click onto my first letter. And then just hit weld, the circles will disappear. So basically what you have to do, um, if I drag these down, I'll show you what I mean. So if I go edit and weld the rectangle gets welded to the B because it was overlapped because I did that right at the beginning but the circles disappear and that defeats the object in putting them there so I'm going to undo and I'm going to undo again to put everything back in place so what we have to do we have to use 
subtract first and then weld. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is left click on my top set of circles. I'm going to hold my shift key down and select my rectangle. But what might help is if I fill this with colour. So with my circle selected, I'm just going to come to the colour wheel and I'm just going to let's just make them red. Put that over there out of the way. And then I'm going to just left click on my rectangle and make that black. So now you can see I've got a, the top rectangle, which overlaps my first letter, is black and my circles are red. So I'm just going to left click on the page anywhere, somewhere not on the design to deselect. OK, so now I'm going to left click on my circles, hold my shift key down left click on my rectangle so I've only got these two things selected and remember because I did the circles last they are a stacked up on top of each other but they're also more importantly stacked on top of the rectangles and that's where they need to be for subtract to work because if you remember, when you're doing subtract, the thing that you're subtracting from the background has to be on top. So I've got the top pair of circles selected, which are red, and I've got the first rectangle, which is black, selected. They're the only two things I've got selected. I'm going to come to edit and come to subtract. And can you see? The red circles have been punched out of the black rectangle and you can see that because you can see through them now. OK, you don't need to fill them with colour. I'm just doing it really more as a visual aid. For you to all see it now, if I left click on this rectangle and hold my shift key down and left click on my on my first letter and now go edit and weld or right click and weld whichever you want to do that's now welded that's my first page okay so is everybody with me so far just have um, a quick drink of my juice hi karen only just noticed you here sorry So I know there's a bit of a delay, so I'll just make sure that you're all OK. I am going to repeat it with each one of the pages. But just in case there's any questions so far, I'll just wait a few more seconds and see if everything is OK for everybody. OK, so Alison, I've got a wow love in this, so that's fine. So. Um, Charlotte's saying perfectly clear. Right, fab. OK, so I'm going to do the same thing. So, you know, if I was doing this just for me, I wouldn't put the colours in. But in it, hopefully to make this a little bit clearer and Hazel's saying yes now, I'm going to just fill each one with colour. So the first thing I'm going to do is select the rectangle and I'm going to drag it out so that it overlaps. the A. Sorry, my phone just cut in there. Now, again, this is personal preference. You can see the shape of my A is fatter at the bottom than it is at the top. Now, me personally, I would prefer the join or the weld, if you like, to be more up here. Because again, it's a bit like last week. If we only overlap it for it to weld down at the bottom, this bit here where there's a gap is going to kind of flop around. It doesn't have to go, you know, all the way over, but get it as kind of close as you can get it. And you have to stretch out your rectangle first, because if you don't, your circles will distort. OK, so I've dragged out the next layer of the rectangle so it's in position, ready for when I come to weld it. But I'm going to do the subtract first. So now I'm just going to left click on my circles, bring up the properties box. We'll fill this with a green 
and then I'm going to select this rectangle that I've just dragged out that overlaps the A and we'll fill that with a darker green. So you can see I've got two separate items. I'm going to, this rectangle that's dark green is already now selected. I'm going to hold the shift key down, select my circles. I can see that the bounding box is around the circles and the big rectangle, although you might not be able to see it on the screen. But when you're doing this yourself, you'll be able to see what you've got selected. And again, I've just got these two selected. I'm going to do edit, subtract. You can see that they're now see-through, so we know that the holes have been punched out of the layer. So now I'm going to left click on this, which is now one layer with holes in. Hold my shift key down, select my A. So I've just got these two items selected now and go edit and weld. And that's all changed to green now because that was the dominant colour. So again, I've now got this. So it's just a case of working your way along. And once you get into a rhythm, you'll be able to kind of whip these up really easily. So again, I'm going to select the rectangle. I'm not moving anything. Remember, we lined everything up at the beginning. So I'm not moving anything at all other than dragging the rectangles out. So I'm going to drag the rectangle out so it overlaps the B so I know that I'll get a good weld. The rectangle selected. Let's just fill this one with a lavender and then I'll click on the circles and I'll fill them with a, a dark purple. And again, I've got the circles selected. I'm going to hold my shift key down. I'm going to select my rectangle and I'm going to go edit, subtract. Let's punch those out. Then I'm going to select this layer now, hold my shift key down, select my next letter and do edit and weld. And there's my next page. And then we're just on to the last one. So I'm going to click on the last rectangle, drag it out. Again, you can see now that the Y is wider at the top than it is at the bottom, whereas the A was the one that was wider at the bottom and narrower at the top. So again, I would drag this rectangle out until it kind of, you know, more or less probably touches at the bottom. Again, the result that you'll get will be determined by the thickness of the font that you use, the style of the font that you use. We'll do another one in a few minutes, but just for now. So I've got my rectangle in place. I can see Alison's got a question. I'm just going to, um, I'll, I'll, I'll have a look at that in a minute. I'm going to hold my shift key down, select my circles. I don't think I need to fill this last layer with colour. I think you can probably see it better now with it just being the last layer. I'm going to go to edit, subtract. So that's punched the circles out of the rectangle. And now because I've only got these two things, I can just drag an imaginary box around both and go edit and weld. Now, if I fill this in with colour, let's just pick a, a random colour. So now, if I bring them back in, so I'm going to right click and put bring to front. Right click, bring to front. Click on this one, bring to front. Stack them all up on top of each other. Select them all. Go edit a line on the left and edit a line on the top or on the bottom. There's my baby word. Right, let me come back and see what Alison's saying. Could you duplicate the word baby? Keep to one side and cut out letter in different colours to add at the end, or am I jumping the gun? No, Alison, you, you can exactly do that. Once you have sized it how you want, before you start putting in your circles, duplicate your word, keep it on one side, and then you could cut them, you know, you could maybe cut this all in white card, and then cut your words separately in a pattern paper. Or, um, like we did last week, you could select this and do an offset and create offsets them, of them all. But no, yeah, you can exactly do that. So the letters stand out. Yeah, perfect. Um, reflections by Jane. Yeah, matte and layer letters. Interesting question, Vicky. Yeah, no, so... 
that's your first word book and as I say if I bring excuse me if I bring my five by seven rectangle in which you know was just my guide if you like um as a as a, 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 a template guide for an envelope and position this in here you'll see that that word book would now fit nicely in a five by seven envelope okay so that's the first word so let's do another one and go over it again and then obviously now what what you would do um give your project a name up here and save it um if i go back to my projects i've already done a couple there's my baby word and i did one in um with the the word hugs and i used a different font so we'll do we'll do another one so i don't need to save this so i'm just going to um right click and group it i'll just put it over to one side for now i'll keep my five by seven rectangle here to you know give me an idea of size so we'll go back we'll go back to text and we'll choose a different font so let's see what we've got let's see uh, can't believe how easy it is you're a great teacher oh thank you so let's choose this one so on my computer this one is called is it it looks like Bruffham Bold B-R-O-U-G-H-A-M Bruffham Bold I think this is a canvas font so again we'll left double click at the end to get the flashing cursor and we'll just use the delete key on the keyboard to get rid of the word text. And I will just put the capital locks on on my keyboard. And we'll do hugs and hit enter or left click to deselect. So again, I'm going to bring this down and I'm going to drag it out a little bit. I'm not going to drag it fully out because, like I said before, I like to kind of put, generally I start off as my first pages as about a two inch rectangle so I'll kind of squash that in a bit but I'll drag it down to make it you know quite big but again this is all personal preference if you want to make this to fit an A6 envelope which would be what will an A an A6 card in the UK is what is it it's about four and an eighth by five and three quarters you know you make your rectangle six by four and a quarter something like that so I'm just going to put that on one side bring this up here out of the way obviously remember this is a group um, we can't tell how tall it is at the moment because the bounding box isn't hugging for want of a better word our word hug so to determine how high these letters are we have to divide it to get the letters to be individual and we also need the letters to be individual letters so that we can then weld them to our pages so with the word selected again you can either right click and hit divide or you can go edit come down to process overlap I can never remember which one divide is I think is it the second or the third it doesn't tell me when I hover over it oh there you go yes the second is divide so now when I click on these, these are all individual letters. They're all lined up together because that's how they've been typed in one row. So now I can just go back. I can go to the basic shapes. I can drag myself a square on. I'll left click on one of the letters to see how high it is. So it's 3.40 inches high. So if I select my square, I can either adjust it manually or I can come up here and I can say, um, you know, I want the height 3.40, whatever I want to do. So let's oh, see if we can get, there you go. So 3.40 high and I'm going to drag it in. So it's about two inches. You know, it's not vital. You might want to make your words slightly smaller and have a bigger section on your first page because obviously remember as you drag your pages out the the more letters you put the bigger your pages will become in width because you're dragging them out to accommodate each letter so your first page is always the smallest page 
Right, let me just see if there's anything. So I've got, you're simply the best. Love the look of these. Is the purpose for it to be a card or some sort of book? Um, Anna, it, it's basically whatever you want it to be. It, yes, it's a card, but in the, you know, the shape of a word. And rather than it being one flat piece of card that says baby or hugs in this case, it's made up of pages, but the way I've used them in the past is generally mostly for babies 